I'm Rodney Perkins and I'm uh, the chairman of uh, Procept and a co-founder with Nikolai Algeri. And we uh, developed this company in order to try to improve the outcomes uh, for benign prostatic hypertrophy. This type of development, I think, represents a new wave of surgical devices in that uh, the device itself is designed to execute a procedure formerly done totally by hand. So it's uh, a new type of uh, uh, surgical device that I think will in the future uh, be much more, more common. We're particularly pleased to be able to work with Dr. Peter Gilling here at Taronga Hospital. Uh, Dr. Gilling is a world-class authority in urology and has contributed to the development of a lot of new innovations. Uh, I'm confident that his input will be very valuable to a more rapid development of this technology and get it to this wide patient population sooner. Currently what we do uh, is a, a combination of different treatments. Many places in the world do what's called TURP, which is transurethral resection of the prostate, and this involves cutting out small slithers of prostate tissue with a fine tungsten wire. And we've been doing that for 70 or 80 years, but the trouble with that is there is quite a lot of bleeding involved. We have developed laser technologies at this hospital, which are now utilised all around the world, which uh, cut down on the bleeding and shorten the patient's hospital stay. But there still is a need for what we call a minimally invasive technique which uh, can be standardised, can be automated and uh, in this case involves a unique and groundbreaking technology uh, called aqua ablation. That's sort of the, in layman's terms, that's the equivalent to water blasting of the prostate. And then we use a novel laser wavelength involving a blue light which uh, can then come along afterward after the aqua ablation and coagulate any bleeding, uh, bleeding tissue that may still be left behind. So it's a combination treatment of water blasting and laser uh, coagulation. It's envisaged that this type of surgery will uh, uh, undergo a pilot evaluation which is what we are doing here. Uh, this is the first place in the world that is utilising this technology on uh, live patients. Assuming that the pilot uh, study is successful then we'll go on to what we, what we might call a phase two study which is multiple centres utilising the technology and evaluating it and seeing if the results that we achieve here are reproducible in other sites. And then, of course, we can compare it to uh, the standard, the gold standard, which might be either a laser procedure or the transurethral resection of the prostate, which is the standard BPH technique from the past. And all that takes time, so I would imagine it will not be available for uh, use outside of a clinical trial for some years. But uh, that's the sort of lifespan of these technologies. They often take quite a few years from bench top to patient and then from patient to uh, regular uh, in practice use. Well there are hopefully going to be both patient benefits and hospital benefits. The hospital benefit with uh, a device like this is that we're going to be able to achieve finally an automated standardized result for patients. The automated robotic arm, which is carefully calibrated to the measurements of the prostate, will deliver a uniform result every time. The advantages to the patient might well be that because there's less thermal injury to the tissue, then there may well be significantly less uh, urinary side effects after the surgery, and particularly we're thinking more of uh, symptoms such as uh, irritation, urinary irritation, having to go to the bathroom more frequently, urinary pain and so forth, which patients sometimes get for a variable length of time after this type of surgery. We're also hoping that the surgery will be shortened ultimately once the technology has been uh, ironed out and becomes uh, standardised 
and so all in all it should be something of interest to both uh, hospitals and surgeons and most importantly patients.